All right, we are live with Rohan. Rohan is with Orange Trail. If you're familiar with Orange Trail, Rohan's been a partner with ad leaks um, and Facebook ad buyers for, geez, I don't know, a few years now. Um, Rohan is your guy for anything and everything related to, to compliance and agency accounts, whitelisting, all that stuff. Um, been really an amazing um, point of contact for our community. Today, we're going to try and um, start the launch of some new things of what we're going to be doing, which is um, more education, more uh, get togethers for the community. And we are honored to start that off today with a um, depends on where you are, but we're calling them lunch and learns, but it could be a snack and learn or a dinner and learn because <laughs> you guys are all over the world. But essentially, um, Happy for Rohan to join us. He's going to dive in and do a, a presentation, and there will be a, a chance for some Q and A's at the end. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat, and we will either get to them at the end or through the presentation. Um, so, with that, I will kick it off to Rohan, who can kind of uh, teach us everything um, meta ads and everything else compliance. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Justin. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. Um, yeah, I mean, look. To be honest, there's almost no information out there about compliance when it comes to ads but there's a ton of information about scaling scale too hard and you crash and burn and basically you're you're stuck and back at zero one right so what we're trying to do here uh through this presentation that i'll share is just to kind of create a little bit more awareness surrounding compliance and the importance of it you know you you'll buy courses for thousands on how to scale how to so you won't even take an hour just to kind of look at how to protect yourself. So that's what I'm hoping here to give, obviously, all free advice to the community just to help the community scale safely. So I'll go into the, um, the presentation now. I'll just share my screen. So for those who don't know me, I will give a brief introduction, a quick little background. I don't want to talk too much about myself, but I, I do need to give a brief introduction just so you are aware of what makes me an expert in this area. Um, I'm around seven years in advertising and marketing industry. Um, I've had multiple seven-figure brands, and yes, I did spend multiple seven figures in ad spend as well, which is why I've been where everyone else has. I've run into those issues. I've made those mistakes which helped me to also learn from them and overcome them and to now make my agency. A successful exits, um, one was in 2020 and the second one is actually in process now. Um, and also I had a Forbes magazine cover feature, that's important. My agency is Orange Trail, that is the partner for Facebook ad buyers and ad leaks. Um, we have over 400 active clients, many of which are on e-commerce vertical and then um, industry. And then we also have lead gen, digital info. We have some restricted categories as well. We have products that are totally fine, but they're just in the eyes of the platforms. They're not, um, which we managed to get live. We have 25, uh, 27 full-time staff, contracts with all the major advertising platforms. And again, through Orange Trail, we featured in Forbes. So quick introduction about myself and the agency. And now I want to go into the types of bans and how to avoid them. Now, some of this you guys might already know, but I'm going to share little tips and tricks and little golden nuggets, which you may not know about. So pay a little bit close attention. Don't be like, hey, I know this already. You might learn something. So the first type of ban is a Facebook page ban. Now I'm going to go through all of the different assets. You may already know this, but a Facebook page ban can happen or trigger once your Facebook page score goes low 2.0. Now that's generally the penalty zone. Facebook can be a little bit uh, generous and give you a couple of weeks to get your shit together. And if you don't, then they'll just immediately restrict the access of the page to advertise. Um, it can also be due to the posts being severely against community standards. That's something if you're doing something very bad. Um, and also there's a few cases where not warming up the page adequately, uh, immediately creating it and then launching ads and scaling up too fast and just getting you know flags immediately. That can also, in some cases, cause a page ban. Now, what do you do? What do you do when this happens? Well, first, first of all, the way they, so the page score is on five different 
uh, metrics. There are five different factors. Um, and these are post kind of survey. There's post purchase, or it can even be post the ad serving uh, and it's sent to customers. And they're, they're rating you on five different metrics, order accuracy, shipping, product quality, communication, and you know refunds or exchanges. Now they have the options here on a feedback form if it's below or above uh, expectations. If customers are really unhappy, they're gonna score below. And then the more that these accumulate, the lower your score will go. And conversely, if they're saying that your expectations exceeded, you will actually have a positive um, correlation and you have a higher score. Now, the page score is really important. If you have a low score, expect to see penalized CPMs and you're gonna have to actually pay more to reach the same amount of people. But if your page score is higher, expect to actually have better quality traffic and lower CPMs. There is a correlation between that. Um, there are other services that can boost your page score. Uh, we are an agency that do provide this, but there's many others. And that is through, uh, you know, giving feedback for these forms through yourself. But in those cases, what you have to do is you have to make it based on the dominant location on, of the conversions. If your um, main source of conversions from US, it won't affect your page score if you're getting feedbacks from you know india it just doesn't work it needs to be from us profiles um also you should check weekly your page score you can check that in the account quality section within the account overview so just a quick overview of page page bans and how to avoid them just really overall have great service have great expectations uh, managed with the ad account disabled i think we've all been here we all seen this red notification pop some of the causes are inadequate warm up. So I've seen people, they launch from a fresh ad account immediately, like five, 10 ad sets, all budget, you know, a hundred plus, and you basically haven't warmed it up and you're immediately going zero to a hundred. This can, in the eyes of Meta, be a red flag simply because it's too aggressive, too fast. So we always suggest internally to our clients, warm up with some ad sets initially low budget, Wait for one ad always to go into review. Once it's approved, then duplicate. And once you put that ad in review, make sure you turn it off. Um, suspicious payments, payment fraud, common problem, active disapproved ad ratio. Now this is something that not many people know about, and I'm gonna talk, to, talk about it in the next slide as well. Um, linked to poor health assets. Again, not something many people are aware of, but these assets all have internal risk scores and the risk scores can be affected and impacted by association of having other connected assets, pages, profiles, DMs that are in poor health states. And then lastly, of course, it's the multiple pages from one ad account after a page has been already disabled or you know unpublished. This can trigger a very serious ban, which is circumventing system it's going to follow you around from ad account to ad account and it can lead to even your domain being restricted and flagged so um what are the best practice tips uh, as i mentioned always put one ad into review turn it off and then wait come back to it after an hour or a couple hours once it's approved then do get the others what i see a lot of people doing is they immediately put a bunch of ads into review they haven't checked that the creative is approved yet and imagine all of those creatives get rejected or even you know 40% or half of them or 60% get re rejected you're above the 20% rule so that is automatically putting the state in a skewed unhealthy uh, ratio and your ad account can just completely get disabled so don't be in a rush it's worth waiting put one ad into the review turn it off wait for it to be approved then duplicate others second thing um, a lot of people do this and please 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 don't do this anymore do not delete reject have rejected ads in your ad account it's okay everyone has them don't delete them that's not going to cover up your tracks people think deleting rejected ads is going to just clean everything up no that actually makes you look more guilty in the eyes of meta because they've already been rejected they're already non-compliant and you're trying to delete them so don't do that just turn them off and remember the 20 percent rule and if you need to do the maths, just look at your overall active ads and the number of rejected ads. Try to just keep the rejected ads below 20% possible. Another audit your setup regularly. Now in the previous slide, I did mention links assets 
can impact your ad account to be restricted. What does that mean? Well, if you have media buyers that have access to your ad account, and those media buyers are also in other BMs and other pages and pages that are banned or pages, you know, BMs that are disabled, by association, your asset can also be flagged. So make sure you do audits regularly, check with your media buyers, check with uh, you know, the, the rejections, make sure you're not deleting anything, and look at your linked assets. Do this very, very regularly. And, and then the last resort is if none of those are working, you can always use agency accounts, which are very strong accounts. They have unlimited spending limits, and that's just because they have a higher tier. And we'll get into that later. Next, we have the business manager restriction. Now, this is, um, of course, one of the worst case scenarios because all of your assets, your pages, your ad accounts, everything just goes down. So the cause is internal risk score and the seller trust tier. And that's because only internal reps know what this is. This is a little bit of behind the scenes information that I'm sharing. We've gotten from our reps. Our panel doesn't look the same as the Facebook reps panel. The Facebook reps panel has the score and the internal health score and the risk score and the trust tiers for every single advertiser. Now, we don't see this, but we've seen on the back end from our reps that some BMs just have a very healthy, high trust tier, and some have a very low trust tier with low risk score. The lower it is, the more likelihood of you being banned. And what does it mean having a low score? Well, if you have, same as the page, active to disabled ad accounts ratio, if it's skewed, um, it's going to lead to potentially, you know, you getting banned. That's it's a it's a big risk. So again, when it comes to the ad accounts in your BM, you've probably seen that when it's in a poor, unsettled state, you cannot actually make new accounts. There's a reason for that because they don't want the ratio to be skewed. So either make all of the ad accounts from the start and then just start using them, or try to settle each ad account before you move to the next. But if you have a bunch of them watch out because your bm could go down again link to poor health assets even in bms it's very very important you could have media buyers in there you could even have vas in there that may have access to another page which is banned by the association your overall bm could be impacted so audit your setup regularly ask your media buyers ask you know your vas whoever's in your bm whoever has access just make sure you drop them a quick question. Hey, by the way, are you admin of any pages that are banned? Any, any pages that are unpublished? Let me know because I need to remove you. That it needs to be done. And then, of course, the flagged and fraudulent credit cards. So this can be a non, uh, you know, it can be a positive, non-positive. Like it's a, and it may not necessarily be that you've done anything wrong. You, you know, your bank might and the billing, you know, fails. But these are also causes for your business manager to be restricted. Now, the best practice tips. Well, first of all, for the BM, try to improve the trust tier. One of the ways you can do that is verifying the BM. Um, this is automatically just going to bump up your trust tier. In the eyes of Meta, you are a known merchant. You've verified. You've sent the, the necessary documentation to, to verify your, yourself. So of course, the BM itself is going to be um, in a much healthier state. Keep the ad account settled. As I mentioned, ratio is crucial. Now, it's not the same as the page. 20% rule doesn't apply. But try to keep your ad account active to an active ratio, just as healthy as possible. Um, that's really important. Regularly audit, as I mentioned. And then decentralize your setup. Now, what does the last one mean? Decentralization of your setup. Well, you want to mitigate your risk of ban, right? So if, for example, one ad account or one BM does go down, your whole business doesn't crash and burn. And how we do that is like this. Now, before you get overwhelmed, I'm gonna break it down very simply. It's a, it's a very simple overview of multiple satellite VMs containing each asset, which you share into one VM that runs the ads. Now, why would we do a decentralization model? The theory behind this is that if one VM were to go down, you don't have a single point of failure for your whole business crashing and burning. I remember we had a client, it was an eight-figure uh, supplement brand, and they came to us and they said, hey, our BM went down, our ad account page, Pixel, everything's lost with it. We were shocked because we didn't know how they couldn't at least diversify their risk by having you know, other BMs connected, the assets spread out. So we really want to emphasize the importance of using multiple satellites, and each BM has a purpose. So for example, 
one VM could hold the pixel that would be here. And then the pixel and the page and the ad account are all shared into the VM running the ads. Now keep in mind the VM running the ads more often than not, almost always, is the one that has the most issues, the most false positives, the most restrictions, bans. So that's gonna be the one that's gonna have the most bans, right? If this does go down, you can just remove it, remove the connection from all these three, and they're not affected. So there's no single point of failure. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. Now, in terms of getting multiple BMs, people are probably wondering, well, how do I do that? It's, you know, I need like four BMs for this. Well, you can do it according to whatever your availability of BMs are. If you have only two, okay, you just have to compile some of these and, and do a two steps or, or three step. The BMs you can create from multiple family members, you can create from friends. I, there's no rule against doesn't have multiple. Um, and you know, we have some clients that are using their grandmother's profile to create a BM. It's, it's totally fine. They're not using it. And ideally, you use someone's BM that never runs ads. Now we have an ebook that um if anyone wants to just stop this and scan it, it goes into detail about all of this and it's totally free. So you can download it just to kind of give you an overview on how to uh, decentralize your setup and um, you know make sure that you're not gonna get ban hammered super easily on, on Facebook. Um, now, additional unknown flags to be aware of. Um, here's where it's kind of like uncharted territory and it's a little bit, yeah. We, we we don't know if these can happen at any moment. We don't even, it, it's, it's, it's a bit all up in the air. Um, one major thing that I really wanna emphasize is that past behaviors will affect you in the future. And what I mean by that is Meta will, will find you thing in the past. For example, your IP address could be linked to your previous BM or personal advertising profile. And if you got written on both of those, and then you start to use the address for future, it will, Meta will put two and two together. It will, you know, associate that. So that's a risk. Uh, you have to be very careful. Using restricted or fake profiles. Now, we recently actually had a call with our reps about this specific point. What is a fake profile in their eyes? Profiles that don't have any profile pictures. Uh, they don't have any friends. They've made almost no posts. Now we get it, people buy farm profiles all the time because their own ones are restricted. It happens all the time, but at the very least, put a profile picture on there or put a post, add some friends because having none of those in the eyes of Meta, it makes it look like a fake profile and they do have detection tools now. We've had it confirmed from our reps because we have our CDMs as well and we've told them the same. Do not do this. They have detection tools that can look for profiles that seem they're like they're fake. Um, and keep in mind, you know, this is kind of like a strike on your record and it will impact you in the, in the future. Chargeback Meta, I, I strongly suggest always contact support. If there's any, ever an issue, you just, you know, try to handle it with them, explain to them what the situation is, what happened, and try to just get it sorted through support. If you charge back Meta billing charges, it can go down as e crime and it's pretty serious. And, you know, that's um, it's not going to end well. So try to avoid chargebacks at all costs, if possible, and just use support. Now, one type of ban I didn't mention so far is the personal profile ban. And some of you, I'm sure, have had that before where it's your personal advertising access has just been restricted and you just not a BM. Also is affected by a risk score. So two types of assets have internal risk scores, BMs and profiles, and then a page has a page score, right? So the personal profile risk scores are impacted again by a combination of all these things. You really have to be careful with the number of pages and assets you're creating. We've seen that sometimes you can tell when a personal profile risk score is low is when your ability to make pages has been restricted. You just can't make pages anymore. And then eventually ad accounts, you can't make ad accounts anymore and other assets. So what we recommend is don't make more than one page a day on your profile. Uh, best case scenario, two per week. That's what we've been advised by our reps. Now uh, we've seen people make more, but you're just running risks there. Um, and these pages will more than likely need to be warmed up as well. So if they're not warmed up and you're running the ads too quickly, live, 
But then what happens is published pages become unpublished. Again, an additional flag that can lead to any ban on the ad account level, DM level, or even the profile level. So these are additional flags just to be very, very careful about. Um, and then lastly, what are agency accounts and their benefits? So we've seen in the community now, there's multiple providers for agency accounts. This is not a pitch. You know, we, we just happen to be one agency that do provide them, but you can get them almost, you know, you know, most agencies nowadays have access to them or know someone selling them. So agency accounts are kind of like <laughs> ad accounts on steroids. That's why I have the bicep here. That's the best way I could explain them. Your personal ad account, but on steroids. And how that happens is because this is an enterprise level ad account. It's a higher tier BM. So these BMs have a higher seller trust tier. They have a higher risk score. So everything is just above board. It's kind of like whitelist. That means ban, it's going to be a stronger ad account. You're going to have unlimited spending limits from day one. So you don't have to go through that warm up billing of 50 a day, 100 a day. You can just go unlimited from the start. And they have a higher level of support as well. So you have a direct line to reps. If you have issues, concerns, they can bring it back if they you know, have restrictions immediately. And with agency level ad accounts, there are usually credit line. That's what we have prepaid sources. And they're big credit lines as well. Uh, but we also recently started to get credit card options as well. So like I mentioned, you know, we just happen to be one of the agencies providing them, but you know, there's many out there. So that kind of brings it to the end of the, the presentation. And I'm open to actually do some Q&A now. That's what I actually love and enjoy doing more because I want to get uh, tailored feedback for, for your problems. So who's got a question? Just drop it in the chat here. Just I can't hear you. I was muted. There we go. Quite a few questions here. So first one is on Facebook page bans. Um, what's the best way? So I always see people, and we see this a lot in the community, when people get in trouble and they have an issue, they immediately freak out because they can't run ads, right? And most businesses are so dependent upon ads that they want to fix it right then and there. Obviously, Facebook doesn't move at the pace that we like. Um, so a lot of people will immediately go and just create a new page and try to you know launch a new page. Then you get into circumvention. So in your, for those that are impatient, is there a safe way to go about getting that back quickly? Because Facebook, you know, sometimes can take weeks. Yep. Um, are we talking about a disabled page or is just under, under penalty? What, what are we? Uh, like a disabled page that you can no longer use to run ads. And is it because the page score was below two? Um, some of the ones that I've seen that specifically come to mind to me are the ones that um, not re related to page score, but maybe like they got in trouble for a suspected trademark issue. Um, I had one that got the page got deleted, right? They de completely deleted the Facebook page because they said wow. we violated a, a patent and a trademark when we actually owned the patent and the trademark. Um, and in that scenario, you know, we had to go to, we had to go to court, federal court and do an injunction to get the page back. And obviously you don't have any communication. So not necessarily specifically page score, but you know, the bot does inadvertently flag stuff. So maybe say they, you know, they say you posted nudity, but it's not really nudity. The bot flagged it. Um, like in those cases where you can't pinpoint it to like, oh, it's a page score issue, which that will take me into the next question. How do you recommend people deal with that? Um, you know, because everybody's impatient. Yeah. <laughs> so I always suggest try to do the traditional chat support and uh, support uh, channels you have to try your best to do it the traditional way um i know it can take long but actually usually that's the most effective and especially cost effective for what i'm about to say next there are some alternative ways that you can bring pages back and that's through using reps that are willing to do it for a fee now we are aware of some of them um and they only do it if the pages are white hat and the services are white hat which you know I agree with that as well. If if it was a false positive, like in your case, you deserve to get it back. So my 
suggestion is try doing the, doing it to, through the traditional support channels. Try mm -hmm. to talk to chat support, and and just a heads up: if you do it during U.S. prime hours, you're more likely to get in front of a Western rep rather than an Asian rep because if it's out of U.S. hours, you will get someone probably is going to be in Southeast Asia who's you know just looking at a script and doesn't can't really think critically, whereas the Western reps they will get shit done and move the needle faster. If that's not an option, then um, feel free to reach out to us. We can make introductions directly. To some reps so we don't handle it it's just it's not a policy it's a policy of ours that we don't do it but we'll introduce you to people that will do it and um you know you talk to them directly they usually charge a fee it can be anywhere from one to two k um and it's totally success based so if you don't get it back you don't have to pay and that's a facebook employee rep that you're connecting them to yeah well there's some kind of that we more, but um, we know that they're affected because some of our clients they're they're stuck you know we have big brands that like I mentioned this BM they had, they had it was an eight trigger brand and they had their BM restricted tried everything taking weeks and eventually they contact this guy pay him 2k and just back in 24 hours so <laughs> right yeah it's crazy um it's insane um on the, you had mentioned, there's another question here. You had mentioned on quality score. So I don't think people really look at that much anymore. I know they kind of moved it and it's a lot, not as easily findable as what it used to be with the way that they redid the BMs. But you had mentioned that you guys can actually fix that. So you have a way if somebody has a low quality score that you can actually boost the quality score. Yeah, so we have a, a method for this. Uh, internally and uh, simply put it's actually just giving feedbacks on the forums now the way it's done through us is through a partner of ours so again we're outsourcing this to a partner that does it um, but it's still through you know uh, our agency that we can provide it how it works is you tell us the amount of conversions you've had per week and there's a simple formula for it and and the optimal formula that that's the secret sauce so we can share that but you have to give the same you have to give the the, the ratio wise percentage in feedback and it needs to match from that country or geo so if your dominant source yeah. of conversions are us that feedback must be from us otherwise it won't move the needle okay yep makes sense so then you have actually have to do purchases like you do fake purchases basically and then those profiles eventually see is that how they are they're doing it or yeah again good question so it's not through purchases so there is another way to do it you just have to design the scenes that that's required still you have to share your ad preview links and then oh. our team will look at those ad preview links and there's a way to get the feedbacks on it but not everyone can do that feedback so that's again the secret sauce <laughs> yeah yeah makes sense okay yep no makes sense uh, for ad account disables, um, when, well, actually for when you're dealing with rejected ads, I remember way back in the day when we were running, I used to work with Rohan on some marketing stuff, but I remember if you remember that Asian guy that we had gotten flagged by Facebook and you had sent that yeah. document over a long time ago, it's, <laughs> it's kind of crazy because I know we probably can't share that, but Rohan had sent when we, when I was running his ads for one brand for him years ago. They actually send over this document and it's a very, very detailed document of like, hey, this is some famous Asian guy by the name of da 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 that they're using in their ads. And it, it kind of like is really, really interesting how deep detailed when they're like and they actually I can't remember they rejected it because we were using him because we didn't have the rights to use him and it was able to identify who he was or something like that. Um, but in those cases, and I remember it had always been touted, like you said, not to delete the ads. But instead of leaving them rejected, aren't you better off actually just changing something on the ad, getting it approved, and then once it's approved, just shut it off so you, that way you don't have those rejected ads in your account going against your score? Of course. The, of course, the primary always appeal, always. But if still get rejections, do not delete, turn them off. Just turn them off. Move. Um, but of course, the primary thing you should do is appeal because you can get them over lift, uh, overturned and it's usually a false positive. Does it help if the appeal comes back? And obviously I know on some appeals, 
like we've ran ads that have been running and then we have to appeal right and um when we run them essentially we'll run them on some ad sets and they're fine on other ones they're not so what we've noticed that happens is we'll appeal it and it comes back and they won't re-enable it and then we'll relaunch it and it'll be fine so those ones that when you appeal and you lose are you better off on editing the ad getting it approved and then just shutting it off um because you don't want those ads you know that are negatively affecting you even if you lose the appeal or does that not help at all no i mean if it's already approved in other ad sets then you should be able to get that overturned so it's again better to appeal always try to appeal um mm -hmm. if you appeal multiple times and it's still not coming back yeah in, in that case it just really just might be a consistent pulse a uh, false positive didn't others right right um and then i know you guys specifically you do agency accounts um you know which we have where i have some friends that run them with you um so can you talk a little bit about how that relationship works with you guys and i know you guys right now have a deal i think going with twitter there's some type of deal with twitter right spend a dollar get a dollar or something like that or but tell us yeah, about yeah. how the how agency accounts work and sure so i mean the the agency accounts thing that i just kind of accidentally fell into it after my my last exit i had a bunch of time a bunch of money and i was like okay well, i want to make something that helps the community so we we ran into this when i used them for my own brand pre-exit if you remember we had 10 stores 10 ad accounts and they were actually all agency accounts we had to give you access through some weird way so I was familiar with them at, at the time. And in my opinion, they're actually a pain point in the advertising industry. Just mm -hmm. don't cut it. You know, the support is terrible. So one of the best things that, you know, agency accounts actually offer is high level support. If the accounts do go down, get them appealed and come back immediately. Um, but then there's more. You don't have to wait for the warm up periods, as I mentioned. So you can scale immediately to 10, 50K a day if you want. The ad accounts just don't go down right. as easily. They're much stronger. And how we got yep. that in place is, well, first of all, having the agency positions where we were offering performance marketing, creatives, you can't just be an account reseller. That's not what all we are. We have performance marketing, creatives, we have Web3 marketing. So we have other services. And then you kind of reach out to the platforms, which we did, and that, that's the hard part. So over the span of the last three years, through many favors, big introductions, and a lot of you know, <laughs> dinners and flying around the world, we managed to get now agreements with Facebook, Google, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, Bing. And sometimes they have quarterly incentives. So this is what you just mentioned. X gave us an incentive for our advertisers, one to one spend match ratio, which is crazy. Spend a dollar, get a dollar, right? So what we do is we just split that with the advertisers. So let's say a client comes to us, they want to spend on our Twitter accounts, we'll give them, let's say they want to top up 10,000, we'll give them 15,000. We just keep that uh, 5k as well. So it's like split 50, 50. That way you're not getting charged anything. In fact, we're paying you. So that's only for specific platforms like X. We have it for Pinterest as well. And sometimes also for others, but for Meta, for TikTok, for Google, unfortunately, they don't give us such um, incentives. Otherwise I'd be a billionaire by now. But um, yeah, we, we have to charge for those platforms. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Is there a, and it's just a monthly fee for the ad account, correct? Is what you charge essentially? Yeah, exactly. So we, we have a, a subscription, which is $500 per month. And we also take a percentage of ad spend. So it depends on which platform. So for Google, TikTok, uh, Facebook, we charge anywhere from 2.5% to 4% of, of ad spend. And what this includes is unlimited backup accounts. So if one goes down or you need multiple, it's all included. We also have 24 hour support. So we're one of the only agencies uh, in, you know, in, in this space, which is providing our accounts and you know helping with support Monday to Friday, 24 hours. And that's because we've got 27 full-time employees um, and you have you know around the clock support in Slack. And to be very honest, like a lot of people, they just come to us either proactively or you know, reactively. So proactively, the brands come to us and they're like, I'm good now, but I want to have a backup with you just in case, because I don't want to have down days where I don't have any revenue. 
And then there's others that have got restricted. I give up, I need an account. So um, both, we welcome them with open arms because we know that it's just a matter of time before you know you get restricted with Meta. Yeah, Facebook sucks. I actually had a, an experience where Meta Verified actually has helped me. Um, my account got actually shut down. I could log in, but when I logged in, it went to a chat window. And that chat window was with Meta Verified Rep and couldn't do anything on my profile. And within three minutes, he was able to push a button and bring my whole entire account back. Um, nice. So I, and I, I, I mean, it was, oh yeah, hold on. Let me look into that. Okay. You're good to go refresh. And it was, <laughs> the only thing I could see was literally the chat thing. So I am a, I'm a believer and I don't know if they kind of tell you any of that, but like for those that, you know, maybe are having issues that don't have the budget that can't work with Rohan and his amazing team. Um, Meta verified. I always, I just pay for that just because, um, I feel like if you're a paying member, then they kind of know you're a real person um, because they have been cracking down hard on the bot situations. Um, and they're always right. trying to figure out ways to do that. But obviously, if you're paying for it, your profile is more than likely real. So, Yeah, I mean, to be honest, if that works, that's great. Um, I, I would highly suggest everyone to try that. Like I said, always exhaust the traditional support channels first. Like coming yep. to us, paying for our rep, that should be the last resort. You know, best case is you get it sorted yourself because you'll save yourself a bunch of money. And also remember like the asset is yours at the end of the day. So your ad account will be your ad account, right? Whereas if you come to us, it is our ad account and we're renting it to you essentially, uh, which you can control the data because you can make the pixel in your BM and connect it to our ad account, but it's still our ad account at the end of the day. So we always suggest, of course, try your best to exhaust the traditional support channels. But if that doesn't work, then of course we can help you out. The problem is a lot of people are impatient and Facebook is not, exactly fast um i've seen it be fast but for most it's not so and it's hard because if you're especially when you're an agency you know and you're responsible for somebody's ads and you have employees and they're your you know they're your largest client and you get shut down it's like oh shit, what do i do so i i get it i've been there <laughs> and that's exactly. the uh the uh frightening moments so um what do you think is the biggest um, so like my biggest thing, like even the other day I had somebody ask me to get on their BM to set up their Instagram shops and my, I won't ever get added to anyone's BM. I do everything through a Facebook ad partner. Is there any other quick things like that of, Hey, don't add, you know, make sure you have, there's even now within business manager where you could set up to where only certain emails can be added to your business manager. So you can't get hacked that kind of thing. Yeah. Is there any like quick short wins from because obviously there's a lot of hacks out there, which I know you probably deal with as well, um, potentially. But is there anything out there that people can do to like kind of somewhat safeguard themselves the best of like generic practices? You know, this is um, this is becoming quite alarming how frequent these hacks are happening uh, lately. I've seen even like big guys in the industry getting hacked and uh, it's pretty alarming. And w what we've noticed, and I've, I've talked uh, at length with our reps about this and they said, look, sometimes we just notice that it's hidden admins. And you might wonder, well, what is a hidden admin? If you go to your BM, you know, admin, people, partner section, you could have someone that might be looking like Shopify, but it won't be Shopify. It will actually be a hidden admin. So this is especially the case if, you've bought bms or you bought profiles a lot of people do this you know your own personal access is restricted your own bms are be a banned since years so you have no other choice but to buy farm uh, just keep in mind that when you buy farmed don't immediately start advertising we know people do it like so first of all don't do it try to use a friend or family members but if you are going to do it wait a while before you advertise you can have invitations sent from a bm that have not been accepted yet always check the pending uh, tab of um, invites from a BM. Check the list of partners. Someone might have hidden themselves as Shopify, but they may be a real person. So we, we've heard of these horror stories where people do this um, hidden admin technique. Also, when it comes to the what you just mentioned, the domain verification, that can be, for example, with, with our domains, we have at orangetrail.io. So we have, for example, Diana, Paul, you know, Marco, they can only be with at orangetrail.io. That domain verification you should set up 
then no one else can really get in there as an admin if they have a different email. Um, uh, to be honest, like even despite this, I'm not sure how people are getting hacked. There is a bunch of page messages being sent out. Oh, your page was restricted, but it's not it's not real. Don't be don't be silly. Don't click those. Uh, always check the emails that are incoming from Meta, or they look like Meta. What I usually do is I look at the sender email, I click the sender email and it opens up the real email because they can mask how the email looks. But when you click to the actual email, it drops down, it shows the real email. It could be like Facebook mail 5678 at, you know, so it's it's a fake email. So I don't know, the, other than this, there's really not much. Just make sure you audit frequently, make sure you check inside out all of your sections of your BM and just make sure your house is in order. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense for sure. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. What's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Because I know you're very busy and you're always traveling the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I have a large team, so uh, they're available, you know, Monday to Friday, 24 hours, and they can almost always book you can book a call on our website orangetrail.io um or you know send me a message i will check my dms i check at the end of every work day so i try my best anyway uh, especially when when i'm traveling it's a bit hectic but i try to get back to my dms or i'll set up a group chat with my team but if you really need to urgently get in touch book a call on our website orangetrail.io it's completely free and you can talk to our team we'll discuss a solution and try to help you out cool I appreciate it, man. Um, sounds good. If you guys have any questions, make sure you hit Rohan up and um, very, very insightful information as always. I know this is a very big um, topic. So if you guys need any help, um, make sure you reach out to Rohan. His team is great. So they'll get you square away. I appreciate it, man. Cheers, man. Appreciate it. Right. Stay safe. Thanks. You too. Right. Later. Bye.